Hey everybody, welcome to the weekly Q&A with myself, Adam, uh, and the Productivity Academy. I'm doing a little bit of a new process here, so bear with me and we'll get going in just a second. But uh, real quick, I wanted to let you know this week we're going to cover uh, dealing with all those little tasks, you know, when it feels like you've just got a ton of little things that are constantly, you know, popping up or, uh, you know, just bugging you and messing with your productivity and your process. So going to go into that. Um, ways you can be just in general. Uh, somebody had a question about being more productive and self-motivated. And then as well, uh, why are meetings seem to be such like a productivity suck? So uh, we'll take that and, and go with that. Now, real quick, if you're watching this on uh, Facebook, that's great. Uh, if you're seeing this outside of the group though and you wanna be part of this live or ask questions or and uh, you know hear from other people as well, uh, I'll include the link to the group. Um, and you can just hop in there. It's free group, uh, request access, and then you just fill out a couple quick questions and you're in. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, uh, you can also, you know, feel free to join the group. Uh, if you want to subscribe, you can click the button uh, and stay up to date with new videos like this, the Q&As, the um, app reviews, uh, and then just a lot of one-off videos I'll put out about time management, productivity, process, all that good stuff. All right, so let's get into it. So I thought this was a really good question. I think this comes up for people, uh, most people, in many different forms. And what I'm talking about here is that having like a lot of these little tasks, and it happens to myself, it happens to everybody. Sometimes you're just kind of feeling overwhelmed by these tons of little tasks. So if you don't have a process to deal with, <coughs> to deal with not choking, no. If you don't have a process to deal with this, then that's where the problem lies, okay? That's the root problem. Okay, and but what is that process? So for me, I would say that the, the first level of this is that you set a time to gather all of this together and you do it as, as much as needed in the sense that if you can do it once a day, that's great. Um, I do this as part of my daily uh, routine of uh, review and planning for the day. And what I mean by this is literally like, Post-it notes, grabbing those, anything I've written down. Um, do I have a three by five index card over here? Um, do, you know, is there something on my phone that I had up? Do I have my journal that I need to grab something from? But the point is all of those things and whatever you might have as well that might be different, you, you, have, you set a time and bring all of that together and have a system for where do you put that for me? It goes into right now, it goes into Todoist. Okay, and then from there I can, you know, okay, email needs to go out to somebody, I need to do this, I need to do that, put something in my calendar, but it goes into Todoist with an action item. It doesn't just say, uh, you know, maybe you should read this book. You know, it'd say, hey, there's a book that somebody recommended, look at it and then decide whether to put it in your, you know, to read later list or buy it and set a time to read it, okay? So specific and actionable. I think that that's really important. Um, on the actual task side, then the next step of this is batching, okay? So let's say you're you know, really in the moment, you're dealing with stuff you have to do today. So you've gathered it all in. Then what you wanna do is batch it. So gather things and say, okay, this is things that I can do, I need to do on the computer, you know, maybe as one. Again, this is, you're gonna have to discover what works for you, but um, you know, maybe I've got some emails to send, I need to order a couple things from Amazon. Um, I need to check on, uh, you know, my, my husband or wife's flight coming in. Okay, those are three things I know I need to be at the computer. I'll do those together. Um, then maybe some work stuff. I've got to, you know, do this and that. And personal stuff, I need to run the laundry and do this. And, okay, you get the idea. Batch that stuff together. Now you've got things that, that make sense and are grouped together. And then prioritize those. What's more important, you know? Do you need maybe to do laundry is your top priority, but maybe it's not. Maybe it's, um, you know, dealing with the work stuff up front and then saying, okay, in the afternoon, I've got time, I can do the laundry, All right? That's the general idea. Now, as you go through this, uh, that's the real basis right there. But you look at it and can you delegate any of this, okay? And, I do, you know, does it, do you have a business partner? Do you have a VA, right? You know, do you have a child you can have do the laundry or start teaching them? And, you know, can you ask someone for help with this? Okay, and a lot of times we ignore that and, you know, we just try to take on more and more and more. So whether, uh, you know, you have an employee, you have, uh, you're an employee, you have business partners, you know, you can ask people for help. So uh, once you've done that, you know, get after it. That's the way you get these things done, you know, is you batched, you've gotten this stuff together, you prioritize and get to it. Okay, attack it, get it out of the way. And then iterate, iterate this process, okay? Because this is kind of like a framework, like I just described, but it's gonna depend exactly 
um, on what you need. You're going to have something in there that's unique that you need. So uh, from that point, you just go through it. Maybe set a reminder that once a week you think back, take 10 minutes and say, hmm, how did this go? You know, where I gathered my task, was I forgetting something? Was there like a notepad in the kitchen that I've been scribbling stuff down on and I generally forget that in the morning? How can I make that work? You know, can I do my morning review in the kitchen or do I just need to remember, hey, I need to go down there and grab that and make that a part of it. So over time, um, you know, you can really build some bulletproof uh, processes this way. Cool. All right. So next is a question about uh, productivity and motivation. So how can I become more productive and self-motivated? Obviously, this is a really big question, right? I mean, this is this could cover a lot. Um, so what I will say as far as this question is, I think I want to start small with this and say that you create systems, okay? And the reason behind that is you're creating uh, these systems to help you become more productive. And by systems, I mean systems and processes, things like automating or writing down a list of how you do something. Okay, and then that also helps you take something that's like, oh, I've got a goal that I want to reach. That's great. But how do you get there, right? And instead of saying, darn, you know, I'm, I meant to do more this week, what do you want to do this week? And then break that down into actions. Like, oh, I actually meant I wanted to, you know, finish out the day having responded to all emails and, you know, done whatever else. Then you can set these actions that are like, okay, it's like a milestone. What do I need to do in order to make that happen? and start breaking that down into actionable items so that you can then get there. And I guarantee you, one, this will make you more productive. And then two, you'll be more self-motivated because no longer is it this like lofty goal of like, ah, uh, I've got this you know, plan, well, not even a plan, I've got this idea that I want to accomplish, but I, you know, it, it's just that looming sense of like, I don't even know how to do it, it's so big, I'm just gonna put it off, right? That's a problem. So you create these actions that you're saying, okay, this is what I do start knocking them off and that just builds your motivation as you go, okay? Think of it as like momentum in the physics sense. You start moving and you just do one little task. Like I responded to one email. Hey, that's good, I got something done. Let's do it again, let's do it again. So that's uh, something that I think is really good. And if you want to do this uh, a little bit better, I highly recommend that you do a daily review, all right? You sit down, if it's not something you're already doing, I think people can be organized already and, and be productive. Uh, but setting that time each day to say, okay, I'm going to sit down, I'm going to go over my day, I'm going to gather all of my information together, I'm going to get organized and then, you know, look out through my day, do kind of a time scheduling and go. All right. And I think that will help you too, as well as just being in general more productive, but also uh, being more self-motivated, that you're now kind of, you're being proactive is what you are and saying, this is what I'm going to do with my time. These are the tasks I need to do. You know, let's go. All right. So cool question, um, and I think that you know again that's there's entire books written about that topic, but that's my my take on getting started. All right, and lastly today the question is why do meetings wreck productivity? So <laughs> that's a great question. Uh, I have my own take on it. Again, there's whole books written on on meetings, which I think can be helpful. Um, like most things, I think it comes down to a few uh, ideas and the things that I've seen in my life, both um, as an employee and as uh, the boss, uh, I've seen these three things that came to mind. I'm looking at my little notes I wrote down when I saw this question and immediately there's no clear goal for a lot of meetings. All right. There's too many people involved and there's no deadlines. All right. So those are the three that I'll stick with for now. Uh, no clear goal to me is the killer and you can solve this yourself even if you're not leading the meeting, okay? Uh, because maybe you have something you want to talk about, you have like your agenda and you can start, you know, if you're a speaker and saying, hey, here's what I want out of, you know, the next three minutes or before I get started, here's what I really need to have happen um, based on this and then launch into it and make sure you follow up and say, hey, you know, thanks for the discussion, but we didn't talk, we didn't actually come to an actionable solution on this thing that I brought up. Okay, and if you are in charge, it's up to you if you're running the meeting to do this. And again, a lot of times it's good upfront. State, what is the goal? What, what are you meeting for? I've been to so many meetings where you're not even aware exactly of what is supposed to come out of it, and that's a killer. Uh, it's a waste of time, so don't do that. <laughs> okay, too many people, this one can be tough, uh, but it, you know, it grows, uh, I think, exponentially. It gets so much harder to have a meeting with like five people than two or three, right? Two meeting, two-person meeting, one-on-one, -on -one, that's easy. 
all right, you can do three, you know, it starts growing. Sometimes you need to have more people there, uh, but it just gets more and more difficult. So in general, if you can keep it to the absolute minimum required people, um, and that includes yourself, maybe you're not needed, you know, if you're not, then, you know, bring that up. Say, hey, look, I don't need to be here. Can somebody send me, you know, the notes? Are we writing the notes? If not, why not? You know, something like that. And just saying, hey, I'm gonna be more productive if I just get some action items out of this. All right, and then lastly, no deadlines. Okay, during a meeting, this is part of that, here's my goal for, uh, you know, what I want this meeting to be or what I want my section to be. And then you need it to be uh, deadlines. And you can do this literally for the meeting itself. Like this meeting ends in 30 minutes and it ends in 30 minutes. Or, you know, everything we do in this meeting needs to have an actionable deadline. And that might just be, hey, um, you know, I went through this. Our goal is to review these three options. They need to be reviewed and summarized and sent out to the team in 48 hours. Okay. And that's great. Everyone's aware of exactly what's going on. Whoever's doing the work has some sort of, you know, actionable step. And there's a clear deadline to that. That And again, it's... Uh, that works for multiple reasons, but I'll just leave it and say that I think that those are the three. And if you're in charge of meetings, keep these in mind. You know, th these are uh, productivity killers, not only for yourself, but everyone else who's in the meeting. And you can really help yourself and your team uh, by trying to keep to these. Uh, so again, no clear goal, too many people, and no deadline. So let's go for clear goals, okay, at the beginning and the end. All right, keep it to the minimum number of people and involve deadlines and try to keep your meetings on time. I understand everything goes over from time to time, but man, if you can end a meeting early or just keep it to time, um, that really does a lot for not only productivity, but everyone's time management. And I found, you know, obviously just general happiness with people. All right, so I think that's it for today. Uh, if you have any questions, be sure to just uh, leave a comment or join the Real World Productivity Growth Facebook group. Uh, and you can pop stuff in there and talk to other people uh, about improving your productivity, your processes, your time management, and, and you know anything else dealing with that. So thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you next week.